Hey, what's up guys? Today in this video, I'm going to show you what all code changes I have done to support the token verification or rather the email verification through token and some of the refactoring I have done to handle the request better by raising an event and doing you know, a little bit of architectural changes. So previously, inside our user registration controller, we were doing a lot of things on the controller itself. If I show you the old controller, you can see I was injecting a token service. And then after the validation, I was unsetting the confirm thing. I am I was you know using the bcrypt to hash the password, set null to email verified at, and then we are creating the user. And then, then we were creating the token. And there was too much happening on the controller. And ideally, we should avoid such things. So what I did, I removed the token service, first of all, because the user controller is now doing a very simple thing. It's calling the user service and it is sending the validated data to create a new user. Okay. Now, what does that create uh, user method do? Let's go inside it. This is a service which is taking the validated data. It's doing all those things which were there in the controller first, which is unsetting of confirm, you know, bcrypt for hashing the password and all those stuff. And it is creating the user. And then the only thing which it additionally does is it raises an event. So we are not injecting a token service. We are not creating a token here right now. My thinking is, if a user is registering, the only thing he should wait for is the entry of his record in the database because that's the only thing which I want to happen before I send him a success response. Okay. Apart from that, anything which is happening on the server is an after effect and that should not have any impact in the performance of the response the user is getting. So we raise an event and we return the user. So the controller gets the user and controller returns it with a status code of 201. Now, the question is, we have raised an event. So what are the things which will happen when this event is raised? So let's see our event service provider, which is one of the file which I have changed in my recent code changes. And what I have done, I have said that when the user registered event is fired, please call this user registration handler. Okay. Let's look at the event first. The event is expecting the user object in the constructor. It's a public variable or rather public property because as we know, any public property in the uh, event class will be accessible to the handler, right? So the service sends the user object the event gets the user object in the constructor and that's set in the user public property of that event. The work or the role of this event class is now done. When this event is fired, user registration handler will be called. Okay. Now in the constructor of this handler, we are injecting the token service and the handle method is automatically called by the framework. Now, the handle method is also injecting the event class. The user registered event has a public property of event user, which we are getting it here. And then I am sending that user to the injected token service, which has a method create token. And this create token is exactly what was there in our previous registration controller or the token service. It takes the user, it puts it in the user ID, it sets and expires at, it creates a token and it returns back. So now my handler has the token. Okay. And then my email function, I have created an email function, which is user verification email. So I am sending an email to the user, which just got created. I am setting a queue to send this email, which email? The email name is user verification mail. This email takes the user object and the token which was just created. Okay, so now let's see 
what are we doing inside the mail function or rather the mail class. So the mail class takes two variables inside the constructor, which is the user and the token. They are here as private properties. These we don't need to make public. And then every email fun class, not function, rather every email class has a build method. So inside that build method, what I did was first I created a URL. Now, why is that URL required? We need to understand that the API server is going to send an email which will have a path which we have created in our next JS application because the user is not going to come to the API server for email verification. Those URLs required for email verification will not be created inside our API server. Our API server doesn't have any public facing pages. It's in the next JS build and hence I added this env variable which has the front end application base url okay we are appending user slash verify and then the token so my next js application which i have created which i'll explain you later has the ability to handle this request okay then based on the functionality or the you know uh, syntax of a build function inside an email i'm returning you know this object which has subject verify your email on video review. It's an email which renders a markdown email. This is our blade file. That blade file has a URL variable in it and a user variable in it. Now let's see what's there in verify.blade.php. So verify blade.php. This is the title. We say hi, username. I'm very happy, blah, blah, blah you need to click on this verify button below and we are done. And this button is taking the URL which we are sending from the method here. And that URL is the one which we just created. Okay, so let's see this thing in action. To make an API call, I created this you know, postman request. So my name here is Amitav Roy, email is reachme plus two. I was trying to test a few things. So let's just say anything will work. Basically it's plus five and uh, password, confirm password. Is my API running? It is, tests are not failing, right? No. So yes, I can make a request. Now, obviously my queues are in sync, I'm not using Redis or SQS. So the email sending part of it is going to take some time because it is running on thread. But if you have a queue worker, then believe me, it will be very fast because you know, we are not waiting for the queue. Uh, sorry, for the email to be triggered. Okay. Um, right. So I'll go to mail trap. This is the new email. You can see a few seconds ago. And this email, as we saw in the blade file, says, Hi Amitav Roy, I'm very happy to have you on board. As last step, I would request you to validate your email address. And I need to click on verify. Before we click on the verify, let's just see the user table. In the user table, I have this new entry. Email verified as is null. Okay, remember token and all those stuffs are null. And now if I click on this link, I am redirected to the dashboard. Why? Because this URL, let me copy this, paste it here. Can you see, see the URL which has formed? Yes, it's a 404, I need to handle it and hence I'm not showing in the front end yet. But this URL has user, verify, and then the token. This is exactly what we created in our in a URL variable from the config, right? Which is being sent to email. So yes, that's handled. And that URL basically verifies the user and directly takes him to the dashboard. Because I believe if you have verified your email, then I should not be calling the login function again, I mean rather calling the login page again and ask you to enter your credentials because you have already done that. 
you have entered your password and you were, you were just waiting for your email verification to happen. So I will just refresh my database and I can see that my email got verified. Okay, I have this date timestamp in here. So it looks like this is working. Now, to test th this entire functionality, what all things do we need to do? I'll first open up registration test. User registration test. What all changes have we done? Let me just open the git diff. So the first thing is, we are testing that when the registration happens, right? When I'm hitting the user dot register route, I added this event fake. This is very similar to you know the previous video if you have not seen where I was sending an email to the user when his video was published. So I do event fake. This allows us to test certain things when an, uh, inside a testing environment uh, in terms of events, right? So I get this basic post data. This post data is a function which is over here. It, it gives me certain fake data for me to you know, make a registration request. I'm making a post call to user.register sending that post data. And then I'm calling that please ensure or please assert that this event got fired. So what will happen is the controller will be executed. The controller will call the user created method inside the user service and the event will be triggered, right? So that's what we have tested over here. Then I'm verifying that an email was sent. This was an event. I need to ensure that the email was also sent. So again, mail fake, the same steps. And in here, I'm just asserting that this email was queued. Okay, which, which email? User verification email. Fair enough, that's also done. And then as an additional step, I want to ensure that it, the email which is being sent, right? Now, obviously I can't test whether the email went or not in, in reality because you know, it's a third party service which we are using. I don't know whether that service will be successful or not, but at least from a code standpoint, I can assert that the email which is getting sent has the user as email has to. I mean, so uh, basically the to field in the email is the user which we just created. So I had to uh, query this user because I was returning the user as part of faker, right? But I can't really do that. So what I did, I had to, because I know that the user has been registered, I made a query to the database and I fetched the user and I send it to this function. And we, I'm asserting that this is true. And it is because all my tests are passing, right? So this ensures that the email is going to the correct user. Now, we have tested that an event is being raised. We have tested that the email was sent. We have tested that the email was sent to the correct user, but there is one more thing which I want to test, which is a very integral part of that email, which is that it sends the token and it sends the correct token, right? So what I did, I created a user, okay, which is unverified, obviously. Right. And then I created a token for that particular user. And then I uh, kind of created an instance of the mail class. So new user verification email. In its constructor, I need to pass the user object and the token. So that's the reason I have created these two you know, uh, instances through factory. And then when I have this, I have an method available which is assert c in html and in that i am asserting that the token is there somewhere in the html and that's how i can guarantee that the token was sent to the user okay similarly i am just asserting that i can see the name of the user that's about it so that's how you know i completed all my tests as you can see tests are running fine I have 33 tests, all of them are passing. And 
yeah, I pretty much completed the entire email verification process. I'll be putting it on the Heroku server soon. And in the next video, I'm going to explain you how I manage the registration flow on my next JS application so that you get a complete picture of how things are working. So thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.